The Adelie penguin, Pygosilis adelaide, is a species of penguin common along the entire coast of the Antarctic continent, which is its only habitat. It is the most widely spread penguin species, as well as the most southerly distributed of all penguins, along with the emperor penguin. It is named after Italy land, in turn named for Adèle Dumont d'Urville, the wife of French explorer Jules Dumont d'Urville, who first discovered this penguin in 1840. Adélie penguins obtain their food by both predation and foraging, with a diet of mainly krill and fish. Krill and fish. The Adélie penguin is one of three species in the genus Pygosilis. Mitochondrial and nuclear DNA evidence suggests the genus split from other penguin species around 38 million years ago, about 2 million years after the ancestors of the genus Apnodites. In turn, the Adelie penguins split off from the other members of the genus around 19 million years ago. Years ago. These penguins are mid-sized, being 46 to 71 centimeters, 18 to 28 in, in height and 3.6 to 6.0 kilograms, 7.9 to 13.2 pounds, in weight. Distinctive marks are the white ring surrounding the eye and the feathers at the base of the bill. These long feathers hide most of the red bill. The tail is a little longer than other penguins tails. The appearance looks somewhat like a tuxedo. They are a little smaller than most other penguin species. Adelie penguins usually swim at around 5 miles per hour, 8.0 kilometers per hour. They are able to leap some 3 meters, 10 feet, out of the water to land on rocks or ice. Ice. Diet. The Adelie penguin is known to feed mainly on Antarctic krill, ice krill, Antarctic silverfish, sea krill, and glacial squid. Diet varies depending on geographic location, during the chick rearing season. The stable isodope record of fossil eggshell accumulated in colonies over the last 38,000 years reveals a sudden change from a fish-based diet to krill that began around 200 years ago. This is most likely due to the decline of the Antarctic fur seal since the late 18th century and baleen whales during the early 20th century. The reduction of competition from these predators has resulted in a surplus of krill, which the penguins now exploit as an easier source of food. Jellyfish including species in the genera Chrysoaura and Cyania were found to be actively sought out food items, while they previously had been thought to be only accidentally ingested. Similar preferences were found in the Little Penguin, Yellow-Eyed Penguin, and Magellanic Penguin. Predators Adult Italy penguins are regularly preyed upon by leopard seals. South polar skuas, in particular, and giant petrels kill many chicks and eat eggs as well. Giant petrels and orcas will occasionally kill adult Italy penguins. Kelp gulls and snowy sheathbills also prey on chicks and eggs, and eggs. Based on a 2014 satellite analysis of fresh guano discolored red, brown coastal areas, 3.79 million breeding pairs of Adelie penguins are in 251 breeding colonies, a 53% increase over a census completed 20 years earlier. The colonies are distributed around the coastline of the Antarctic land and ocean. Colonies have declined on the Antarctic Peninsula since the early 1980s, but those declines have been more than offset by increases in East Antarctica. During the breeding season, they congregate in large breeding colonies, some over a quarter of a million pairs. Individual colonies can vary dramatically in size, and some may be particularly vulnerable to climate fluctuations. The Danger Islands have been identified as an important bird area by BirdLife International largely because it supports Adelie penguin colonies, with 751,527 pairs recorded in at least five distinct colonies. In March 2018, a colony of 1.5 million was discovered. Adelie penguins breed from October to February on shores around the Antarctic continent. 
Adelies build rough nests of stones. Two eggs are laid, these are incubated for 32 to 34 days by the parents taking turns, shifts typically last for 12 days. The chicks remain in the nest for 22 days before joining Gresha's. The chicks molt into their juvenile plumage and go out to sea after 50 to 60 days. days. Upsley Cherry Garrard was a survivor of Robert Falk and Scott's ill-fated British Antarctic Expedition of 1910, and he documented details of penguin behavior in his book The Worst Journey in the World. They are extraordinarily like children, these little people of the Antarctic world, either like children or like old men, full of their own importance. George Murray Levick, a Royal Navy Surgeon Lieutenant and scientist who also accompanied Scott, commented on displays of selfishness among the penguins during his surveying in the Antarctic, at the place where they most often went in, the water, a long terrace of ice about six feet in height ran for some hundreds of yards along the edge of the water, and here, just as on the sea ice, crowds would stand near the brink. When they had succeeded in pushing one of their number over, all would crane their necks over the edge, and when they saw the pioneer safe in the water, the rest followed, followed, in footage shot for the 2018 BBC Earth documentary series Spy in the Snow, the boisterous behavior of Adelie penguins was made especially apparent when an individual arrived to chase off a southern giant petrel, Macronex giganteus, that had landed to threaten a group of emperor penguin chicks, in spite of the species difference between them, between them. Adelie penguins arrive at their breeding grounds in late October or November, after completing a migration that takes them away from the Antarctic continent for the dark, cold winter months. Their nests consist of stones piled together. In December, the warmest month in Antarctica, about minus 2 degrees Celsius or 28 degrees Fahrenheit, the parents take turns incubating the egg, one goes to feed and the other stays to warm the egg. The parent that is incubating does not eat. In March, the adults and their young return to the sea. The Italy penguin lives on sea ice but needs the ice-free land to breathe. With a reduction in sea ice, populations of the Italy penguin have dropped by 65% over the past 25 years in the Antarctic Peninsula. Peninsula, young Italy penguins which have no experience in social interaction may react to false cues when the penguins gather to breathe. They may, for instance, attempt to mate with other males, with young chicks, or with dead females. The first to record such behavior was Dr. Levick, in 1911 and 1912, but his notes were deemed too indecent for publication at the time, they were rediscovered and published in 2012. The pamphlet, declined for publication with the official Scott Expedition reports, commented on the frequency of sexual activity, autoerotic behavior, and seemingly aberrant behavior of young unpaired males and females, including necrophilia, sexual coercion, sexual and physical abuse of chicks and homosexual behavior, states the analysis written by Douglas Russell and colleagues William Sladen and David Ainley. His observations were, however, accurate, valid and, with the benefit of hindsight, deserving of publication. Levick observed the Adelie penguins at Cape Adair, the site of the largest Adelie penguin rookery in the world. As of June 2012, he has been the only one to study this particular colony and he observed it for an entire breeding cycle. The discovery significantly illuminates the behavior of the species whose population some researchers believe to be a bellwether of climate change. Adelie penguins living in the Ross Sea region in Antarctica migrate an average of about 13,000 kilometers, 8,100 miles each year as they follow the sun from their breeding colonies to winter foraging grounds and back again. During the winter the sun does not rise south of the Antarctic Circle, but sea ice grows during the winter months and increases for hundreds of miles from the shoreline, and into more northern latitudes, all around Antarctica. As long as the penguins live at the edge of the fast ice, they will see sunlight. 
As the ice recedes in the spring, the penguins remain on the edge of it, until once again, they are on the shoreline during a sunnier season. The longest treks have been recorded at 17,600 kilometers, 10,900 miles, miles. Adelie penguins are faced with extreme osmotic conditions, as their frozen habitats offer little fresh water. Such desert conditions mean that the vast majority of the available water is highly saline, causing the diets of Adelie penguins to be heavy in salt. They manage to circumvent this problem by eating krill with internal concentrations of salt at the lower end of their possible concentrations, helping to lower the amount of ingested salts. The amount of sodium imposed by this sort of diet is still relatively heavy, and can create complications when considering the less tolerant chicks. Adult Italy penguins feed their chicks by regurgitating the predigested grill, which can impose an excessive salt intake on the chicks. Adult birds address this problem by altering the ion concentrations while the food is still being held in their stomachs. By removing a portion of the sodium and potassium ions, adult Adelie penguins protect their chicks from ingesting excessive amounts of sodium. Adelie penguins also manage their salt intake by concentrating cloacal fluids to a much higher degree than most other birds are capable. This ability is present regardless of ontogeny in Adelie penguins, meaning that both adults and juveniles are capable of extreme levels of salt ion concentration. However, chicks do possess a greater ability to concentrate chloride ions in their cloacal fluids. Salt glands also play a major role in the excretion of excess salts. In aquatic birds such as the Italy penguin, nasal salt glands excrete an extremely concentrated sodium chloride solution, reducing the load on their kidneys. Kidneys, these excretions are crucial in the maintenance of Antarctic ecosystems. Penguin rookeries can be home to thousands of penguins, all of which are concentrating waste products in their digestive tracts and nasal glands. These excretions inevitably drop to the ground. The concentration of salts and nitrogenous wastes helps to facilitate the flow of material from the sea to the land, serving to make it habitable for bacteria which live in the soils. soils.